every morning we knew that there will be people who are walking around um, robbing people. There's screams every morning and that's not even far from a police station and there's no point of reporting because there's nothing that is going to materialise out of that. It was through the lived experiences of our members that we realised that there was a problem with policing in Kailicha. Impossible numbers of dockets are allocated to the detectives. People are saying, we're tired of feeling unsafe in our own community. We don't see the courts and the justice system and the police doing anything to make people feel better or safer. Those detectives cannot do proper investigation work. The question for us was, what would make people safe? What campaign would make people understand that we have to establish safe communities? We felt no. The community has lost faith in the police. We would like a commission of inquiry that is going to delve deeper into the problems. This is the mother of Nandi Pamakeke. Nom Tandazo Makeke is her name. As uh, those present will recall, her daughter was murdered in 2005. Toilet. Muse Kona Umhonga Labu Abu Pilang Nagasel Eshlus is Kubab Hung Nobas Kalum to Papa Lips soon gone by eh Kubungela ingat I so Abu now pale. Initially, TAC is a movement for people living with HIV to advocate for access to treatment. But as the campaign went forward, it attracted a lot of young people, particularly poor people in poor communities, who were not only facing HIV as their only issue. The majority of, of TAC members are young women, particularly black African in poor townships. One of the things that we were confronted with was obviously gender-based violence. Lona Mlofano, who was one of our educators in Side B, openly living with HIV, was raped and killed in Kailicha in one of the shippings. And the beating happened in the street. It was publicly done. The guys came together and they were beating her outside like a dog. We followed it up, postponed regularly, but in, eventually the case was uh, convicted, which we know that conviction rate in South Africa is very, very small. It's less than 10%. As a consequence of that case, which had scores of hearings, the docket going missing and so on, the entire organization felt not simply the pain that had come with her death, but also the anguish and how the system was failing her mother, her comrades, and the broader community. At the same time, a young lesbian who was a member of Free Gender, Suleswa Nkonyana, was murdered. In the activists, Nkonyana was beaten, stoned and stabbed to death in February 2006, an orgy of violence motivated by homophobia. Today, the court heard that correctional services reports were outstanding and that the case was postponed once again. The case was postponed 96 times. So we were getting exhausted. We are frustrated um, the way they, the Kailisha magistrate is doing things. We were inundated with lots of cases from community members who saw us as an organization that can also take up their cases that were stuck. Dog heads got lost in the, in the police. They didn't even go as far as the court. We followed each and every case. Then we felt no. We need to get a, a comprehensive view of what actually is happening because now the community has lost faith in the police. 
we're beginning to lose faith in the justice system as a whole. It is our desire to see the justice be justice given for everyone in this country. It was treatment action campaign, equal education, above all the social justice coalition, who mobilized men and women, heterosexual, to march in defense and to picket in defense at every court hearing of a lesbian like Soliswa and Konyana. By the time SJC was established, we were already following like 16 cases nationally, if not more. So I, we, we began to question all of those things. What is a court process and how should we influence court process? What, 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 what's happening in our courts? Why are cases being postponed? The most frustrating thing in following up a case is the postponements. The police do not do enough in terms of their preparation for the case because the police is an extension of the justice system. Because of the design of the environment, policing is very difficult. Narrow streets, no streets, which obviously will present problems in so far as you know, patrols are concerned. But being so doesn't mean that uh, the people should be left on their own and not be policed. When we decided on a commission of inquiry, we wanted to be a comprehensive one that looked at safety and the criminal justice system. And this had been preceded by probably hundreds of marches and pickets. And we'd literally hit a brick wall. And the critical thing was to break open that brick wall and to get to understand the problem what was wrong with the SAPs and what is wrong in terms of infrastructure development and inequality and how the two link. The Commission of Inquiry into Policing in Kailicha was established because of organizations such as the Social Justice Coalition, Equal Education, Treatment Action Campaign. And these are organizations that have offices in Kailicha and they also have members in Kailicha. So a commission is generally set up to investigate a societal issue that might not be able to be dealt with through the courts or through the normal processes. It usually deals with deep systemic problems. It needs to be independent, it needs to practice without uh, fear of being influenced and its sole purpose is to work through its terms of reference and to provide um, recommendations that can be then taken forward. Because of the way in which the law um, is set up, firstly it required the Premier to actually establish the Commission. It required the provincial government to get on board. Secondly, it required the participation of the National Minister of Police and then more broadly the South African Police Service. For some time we were not getting cooperation from the police in terms of asking for documents. Um, until such time that we had to issue subpoenas. Then the National Minister, then Natim Teto, um, challenged the entire establishment of the Commission. He felt that it, it, it was unlawful. Um, the Premier didn't have powers to establish a Commission. And even if she had powers, this would be a Commission without powers of subpoena. Originally, we also wanted the city of Cape Town, the local government, to be included in the terms of reference because of the law enforcement functions of local government. Um, but that was, they were excluded. The media portrays the commission as something that was established by the Premier of the Western Cape. And that's where we disagree because we put pressure on the Premier to establish the commission. The community was already on board um, about this, but there was hesitation from the National Department to do so. So we started lobbying the Premier around end of 2011, beginning of 2012, to say actually the Constitution does give you power of oversight over the South African Police Service. So she said she's going to take legal advice and review whether she has that power or not. And we gave evidence of why we felt it was important to establish a commission. Nine months went by, Premier Helen Ziller never said anything. We had to put pressure on her to make a decision the Minister of Police, who has actually the responsibility of 
ensuring that the safety in our communities was challenging the very same community in court. Using state money to challenge the community, you're saying, actually, you are safe. There's no need for a court case. That's what I felt the minister was saying, Minister Natim Tete at that time. And Ria Piecha also came. She was also not uh, speaking in a different tune. They tried to divide the community and they visited Kyle Licha where they were making statements that such a commission did not need to exist. Um, and they made it look as if all was well in Kyle Licha while everyone knew that there were several issues which were taking place in Kyle Licha. The matter then went to the, to the High Court and then the matter went to the Corn Court where there was a unanimous decision that uh, the province does have powers to establish a commission of inquiry. We unanimously hold that section 206.5 accords a province a clear power to establish a commission of inquiry into policing function. Provinces have got tools that they can use to enforce accountability on the part of the police. The politics got in the way. Some uh, aspects of the community in Kailicha were against the commission because it looked like we were putting a spotlight on, on the policing because policing was seen as a national power and most of those people don't realize the urgency of being heard but also the agents of understanding how deep is the problem and so that the state can actually deal with the problem so that the community can gain trust back in the, in the police. People had lost faith, so they actually didn't believe such a commission would actually have any impact on what was currently happening in Kailicha because these issues had been raised for several years now. It required education on the ground uh, to inform people and to explain to people the impact that the Commission would have on policing in Kailicha. One of the most important things was that yeah. it required uh, the community of Kailicha to actually lead the process. For, for the SJC this was crucial and this is why it, it ultimately became a people-led commission. We were in court and Justice Musineke was actually handing down the judgment. That for me was a moment of power to the community. That was a victory itself because it was the first commission where communities themselves advocated for it, rather than it be appointed by the president or the premier. In the lead up to the commission, there was a lot of frustration, but we were in the middle of this, this battle. And I think people were generally quite invigorated and uh, People were very excited to keep pushing forward. Without it being led by communities in Kailicha, it would have just been lawyers sitting in a room. We put a lot of sort of faith in this process to further our work, and not just for Kailicha, but for South Africa. Well, the commission was an emotional roller coaster ride because people spoke about their own personal experiences. It ended up being 21 rapes, including the five. There was one little girl that died before they apprehended the suspect, and he was a serial. We failed them. We talk about them having human rights, access to health, access to justice. We don't think about the, about what these children, these young adults, these people have to go through and the effect of sexual violence on them. The commission itself is not something that communities are used to, especially Kailicha. I think it's probably one of the two commissions that have ever happened in that community. So it does bring a lot of uh, anxiety in the community because they don't know about it. Eventually the community warmed up. As the process of inquiry uh, was progressing and we were talking about it, so it was in the media, it became packed. The hall was packed, there was no place to sit. It's disheartening. It's just plainly not enough personnel available on the station to, to do what is required from them.
Well, it, it, it was a big process because we must have gone through 50,000 uh, police documents because we had to understand the national instructions, the standing orders of the police, um, their policies. We, we went through police dockets in Kailicha. We took um, more than 200 affidavits from members of the public. We called in expert witnesses to testify on various aspects. And the Constitution already gave the province sufficient oversight powers. So it was a huge operation. We had to call in senior members of the police to come in and testify. The Provincial Commission of Police, uh, General Lamour at the time, um, had to testify, and some of his generals, teachers as well, because also uh, there was a problem of violence in, at schools. So we, we called in quite a number of, of people. There can be no doubt that co conventional or so-called normal policing methods or strategies cannot be deployed or used in many parts of Kandachat particularly in areas that exhibit high density informal settlements. None of the strategies proposed by the NGOs or by some witnesses will make any difference. Initially, um, the police were apprehensive because they were not sure. They thought that this was going to be a witch hunt. We made it clear from the outset. The idea was to look at the actual problems, the root causes of the problem, and try and find solutions. Kulayo indi ma tingati abantu abana abakwazi kulinda yilendo ebange luba ukuze mabathe amapolisa wasembi wezi abakwazi kulinda xa kuthiwe kubo mabalinde abafuna ukuyenzelwa lo bafuna into mayenzeke ngomzuzu Policemen work under tremendous pressure and I think things can get very very uptight if you have three or four of them in one office it's not a recipe for success The commission was an attempt for communities to engage with the state, but not just for certain people to go and present our views, because that's what happened in the court case. It's only the, the lawyers who have the lawyer language, whereas ordinary people have a right to be heard in their own language, because they are the ones who are actually bearing the brunt. And the commission opened it up. We spoke evidence from our own experience. <laughs> Um, there were two Masile, Masile high school boys that were killed in a gang fight. There are no police around in, in that school or there is no per patrolling happening around that school. I went to, to the detective in charge. So he responded in a very harsh tone. What about the case and what do you want to know about the case? And then I told him that uh, as a deceased family, we need to know the details around the case and the circumstances around the case. And he said the light was caught with his body halfway through the window of a house breaking in and he was moved. It was also the first time that community members, people from Kailicha, the organizations involved, actually got to listen to police and senior members of the police give testimony and be held accountable. Um, and that was the first time that that's happened. Um, so that was also just quite an important moment. The police is an organization that are many years old and there's some even young ones that come in now that already have the attitude that cowboys don't cry. It allowed communities to be in the same room with the people that we always see as them. That is what the Commission did, is it opened up understanding how the forensic science laboratories work or don't work, how they're resourced or not resourced, whether, whether cells have toilet paper or not how victims of crime are treated or not. Facilities, police stations, human resources. It was really an education for me to see at granular level 
how the police operates and to recognize that it is not simply a question of a lack of will to fix this, but there's a culture and a bureaucracy in the Weberian sense which is difficult to break. So sometimes there is lack of realization, especially for those who are high up in the ranks. The impact of the decisions that they take at provincial level, what it does at community level. Show that the police are members of the Kalicha community. They have a strategic alliance with community organizations operating there. They share a common interest. They share a common objective, and that is to ensure the safety and security of the community in accordance with the constitution. We produced 540 pages or so with a number of um, recommendations, um, looking at the question of resources, looking at the issue of uh, the performance management, you know, um, looking at the question of, you know, um, structures, you know, being set up properly, you know, within the, the communities and the police, you know, um, having constant uh, meetings, you know, um, we spoke about the importance of um, not only the police doing out their work well, but also the police to look at themselves internally and see how they treat their own employees. Well, I'm prepared to apologize for uh, the lack of services uh, rendered to ad address the crime problems in the Kalicha area. Seeing the police really changing their tone and really apologizing to, to the victims of crime and everyone in Kailija, it, 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 it again changed the, the tone of the commission where it was just them, um, you know, being defensive every time evidence was brought forward. But I think, I think after a few days of the public hearings, they realized this is not about our client wanting to rip or to protect their political agenda. This is about people on the ground. Now we followed the, the, the recommendations by the team. The first one is... And there was 20 progressive recommendations which speaks to how, do, how can we start to do things that will improve safety in college. And all those 20 recommendations, in my view, are very specific in terms of what should be done. They're very clear and they're very forward-looking. Um, and if you have them all implemented, you may start to make a difference in Kailija, but you may start to have effect in other communities around the country. Between July 2014 and July 2015, we ran a project on addressing the backlog uh, in terms of cases in Kailija. There was a great sense of achievement and of potential for immense change because for years we'd been identifying little problems. When you look at the report, when you look at the, the data that came out of the Commission, it's an amazing testament to what was achieved there. But for change to actually happen on the ground, for tangible results to be felt, our work was just beginning. And we needed to continue with our advocacy, with our education, with our research, to ensure that these amazing recommendations were actually put in place. The Commission led to the appointment of a new cluster commander. The new cluster commander has really led a process of, of renewed engagement, of participation, of trying to open up um, to local communities and organizations like SJC. Unfortunately, you know, many of these things are linked back to politics. After the re recommendations came out, we tried to engage with the provincial department and also the national department because we felt that those are the two departments that could actually deal with the or try and uh, implement the recommendations but there was lack of responsiveness from the national department if the national minister gives in then it's as though he's giving in to the da and vice versa
we decided that the best route to take was to litigate. We were not only litigating on the police resource allocation for Kailicha, but on the police resource allocation in the country. Because it's sort of uncovered and was dealing with really deep institutional structural issues in the state, it's important to understand that it's going to take time. It has worked to a certain extent because now we, there is that engagement, there is that level of trust, I would say, between subs and social movements. The court actions and the commissions revealed to subs that there are other partners in our communities who are willing to assist subs in the fight against crime, in betterment of policy. Subs locally realize that the campaigns that we are pursuing, like we are demanding more police resources to be deployed in areas like Kaili, Ranyanga, Refunding, Inanda, is that it is going to assist them in their work uh, as well. The new uh, Minister of Police and the Deputy Minister of Police have made st statements in public that they cannot oppose us in court on such a matter as they felt that this is an obvious issue that we were raising and that needed to be resolved by government through interactions with the communities and also with different stakeholders in civil society. We're still prioritizing African areas and giving them nine times more resources than poor, colored and black communities. And the question is, what are we then doing? How are we trying to combat crime when we know every year that our statistics are actually telling us where violent crimes are due to, which areas have large populations that are difficult to police. Well, we've not received anything that is official from the provincial or national department um, saying that they are not continuing with litigation. But the only outcome that we would be happy with is when they decide to implement the recommendations and also to listen to some of the things that we've been saying. We still have a long way to go and unless we put so much pressure and it doesn't have to be the SGC putting that pressure. I think it's there for any community to actually use it. 